There are places in this world that exist in the spaces between reality and nightmare. Places that you can only find if you're not truly looking for them. They appear when the hour is late, when the world is quiet, and when the boundary between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. One such place is the midnight train, a spectral locomotive that rides the rails of forgotten tracks. It does not appear on any map, and no one ever speaks of it, but those who encounter it never forget. The midnight train is a gateway, a passageway to the darkest corners of your mind, a place where your deepest fears become reality. Clara had heard the stories, the whispered tales of a train that only appeared at midnight, its whistle echoing through the quiet streets of Ravenswood. The train was said to carry dreams to those who boarded it, but dreams are a double-edged sword. They can bring you joy, or they can bring you face to face with your worst nightmares. And Clara, restless and haunted by the memories she couldn't shake, was drawn to the midnight train like a moth to a flame. One cold, moonless night, unable to sleep, Clara found herself wandering the empty streets of her town. Her footsteps echoed on the cobblestones as she walked, her breath visible in the frigid air. She didn't know where she was going, she just walked letting the night take her where it would. But as the clock struck midnight, she heard it, the distant sound of a train's whistle, low and mournful, cutting through the silence like a blade. Intrigued, Clara followed the sound, her heart pounding in her chest. She had never seen any train tracks in Ravenswood, yet the whistle seemed to be coming from just ahead. The fog rolled in thick, shrouding the street in a ghostly mist, and as Clara rounded a corner, she saw it, the midnight train. It was a black, hulking behemoth of iron and steam, its windows darkened, and its engine belching smoke into the cold night air. The train seemed impossibly long, stretching into the mist, and as Clara approached, the doors of one of the carriages slid open with a hiss. Without thinking, she stepped inside, the door closing behind her with a final, metallic clank. The interior of the train was dimly lit, the air thick with the scent of old leather and something else, something damp and earthy, like wet soil. The seats were worn, the upholstery faded, and the windows were so dirty that Clara could barely make out the landscape outside. But it wasn't the outside world that held her attention, it was the passengers. They were silent, motionless, their faces pale and gaunt, their eyes hollow. Some were dressed in clothes from another era, others in tattered rags, but all of them shared the same haunted expression, as if they had seen things no one should ever see. Clara hesitated, her instincts screaming at her to leave, but something stronger, some deep-seated need, pushed her forward. She moved down the aisle, her footsteps muffled by the threadbare carpet, and took a seat at the back of the carriage. The train lurched forward with a jolt, and Clara felt herself sinking into the seat, the dim light flickering above her. She looked around, but the other passengers didn't move, didn't even seem to notice her presence. The air grew colder, and the shadows in the carriage deepened, pressing in from all sides. Clara closed her eyes, trying to calm her racing heart, but the moment she did, the nightmare began. She was no longer on the train. She was in her childhood home, standing in the middle of the living room, surrounded by shadows. The room was just as she remembered it, familiar, yet distorted, as if seen through a cracked mirror. The furniture was covered in dust, the windows boarded up, and the air was thick with the scent of decay. Clara knew this wasn't real, but it felt real. Too real. As she stood there, frozen in place, the shadows began to move. They slithered across the floor, crawling up the walls, their shapes shifting and changing, forming twisted figures that seemed to mock her fear. A sense of dread washed over her as she realized where she was. This was the place where her mother had died, where she had found her, lifeless and cold, her eyes staring into nothingness. Clara tried to move, but her feet wouldn't obey. The shadows grew larger, their forms more distinct, until they towered over her, whispering her name in voices that were not human. She tried to scream, but no sound came out. The shadows closed in, their hands reaching out to drag her down into the darkness. But just as the nightmare threatened to consume her, the train jolted again, 
and she was back in the carriage, gasping for breath, her heart pounding in her chest. The passengers were still there, still motionless, but something had changed. Their eyes, once hollow and empty, were now fixed on her, watching her with an intensity that made her skin crawl. She could feel their silent judgment, their knowledge of the nightmare she had just endured. The train continued on, the landscape outside growing more and more distorted, twisted into the grotesque shape that defied explanation. Clara realized with growing horror that the train wasn't taking her to any physical destination. It was taking her deeper into her own mind, into the darkest recesses of her soul, where her deepest fears and regrets lay hidden. She tried to get up to escape the train, but her body felt heavy, as if weighed down by an invisible force. The carriage seemed to stretch out before her, the exit impossibly far away. The whispers started again, soft at first, but growing louder, more insistent, until they were all she could hear. They spoke of things she had tried to forget, of memories she had buried deep, and of the guilt that gnawed at her at every waking moment. And then, as if in response to her rising panic, the train began to change. The walls closed in, the ceiling lowered, and the seats warped into twisted, nightmarish shapes. The passengers dissolved into shadows, their forms merging with the darkness that now filled the carriage. Clara felt herself sinking into the seat, the fabric closing around her like a cocoon, trapping her in place. She struggled, fought against the oppressive darkness, but it was no use. The train had her now, and it wasn't going to let her go. The whisper turned into screams, the shadow closed in, and Clara realized with a sinking dread that she would never leave this place. The midnight train was her prison, her punishment, a place where she would be forced to relive her worst fears over and over again for all eternity. And so, the midnight train continued its journey, riding the rails of forgotten tracks, its whistle echoing through the night. The passengers remained silent, their eyes hollow, their faces gaunt, waiting for the next lost soul to board. The train never stopped, never slowed, its destination unknown, its purpose clear, to take you to the darkest corners of your mind and leave you there, alone and afraid, with nothing but your nightmares for company. And somewhere, deep within the twisted corridors of the train, Clara sat, her eyes vacant, her soul trapped in an endless cycle of terror and despair. The midnight train had claimed her, just as it had claimed so many others before, and it would continue to ride the rails, searching for its next victim, its next passenger, its next prisoner. <laughs>